Welcome back, and if you are new here, thank you for joining. Today, I'm going to be walking you through my recovery movement day. As I ramp up for season, I thought it would be awesome to bring you all through what my training looks like as a professional athlete. So today, I will be walking you through what my recovery movement day looks like. This is a day where I was really sore. My body had been through a long week of training, but I didn't just want to sit around all day and not get any type of mobility in. So that is what today is geared towards, and I cannot wait to bring you all through it. If you all are looking for more training videos and workouts related to softball or fitness in general, definitely check out my Instagram and my TikTok at this handle. On there, I post daily on my feed and my stories. Without further ado, let's get into this recovery movement day. Here? All right. My hammies are so sore today. You said for 60 seconds for doing this? I've gotten a lot better at these when I think about pulling my stomach into the ground. When you do these right, they should be like really difficult. But properly, it uses a lot of smaller core muscles. Teach them the greatness. <laughs> Two five leg lift. So. Same type, same type move that we're doing before. Round the ankles again. In that two-point position. I was like a bear. Make sure I'm in that push-up position. A little bit further outside. You don't want to be too close. Keep touching on the band over here. Try not to shift from here. Lifting up. Back down. So really, when you're doing these guys, you should really feel it in that loop. The majority of the time you're doing it too. Something to think about. If you're going to feel unstable, you don't want to kind of twist, right? Yeah. Whatever leg's lifting up, dig into that opposite foot. So let's say I'm lifting up my right foot, dig in your left foot, so that way you're stable, hips not turning. Here, back to the other side. Keep right. that neutral spine as well, too. You got ten each side. All righty. There you go. So am I keeping these on the ground the whole time, right? Yeah, hands down a little bit. Maybe try to drop your butt down just a little bit. There you go. Right there. Good. Yeah. How many seconds do I hold on each leg? Honestly, just like one. Okay. Like don't, don't, don't try like overthink it. Like, hold it like one, two, three. It's just like a quick little lift up and then right back down. It ain't easy. <laughs> no, it's not. I'm shaking for sure. How many more seconds? It's over for 10. You gotta do 10 each time. I think I did like 15. Oh, there we go. We over. <laughs> that was tough. All right. This time, bringing the band up a little bit. We want to kind of go above the knee. Hands them. Bring my hands over top right over here. You don't want your feet so far, just so that we're doing like our normal kind of boot braids. Okay. There. Further out is more hamstring, right? Yeah. You go, the further you go out, like the more you're targeting more your hamstrings. Really not trying to go for that. Really trying to target more like hips and the glute area. Okay. Glute area. So, trying to get in front of the Remember, push again, push out, or get to that band. All right. I want to kind of bring you in. Make sure we're still pushing out on it. It's going to help you get a little bit more. You kind of get that extra squeeze. From there, you want to read, back down, back up, read, back down. Does the reach um, engage more stability? So it's really, really going to engage a little more stability. Off too. It kind of helps you out into more like that coiling. Because like softball, right? Right. So. As we're kind of going up, think of it more as how kind of like it So you're coming over, you're kind of getting into that, starting to kind of get that yeah. pattern, that side, oblique side of everything. Six feet side. Push all the way through. Yeah. Good. Next. Got a fun one. So like hands are stacked underneath our shoulders right over here. Keeping that flat back, loop down. Driving up, back down. Driving up, back down. So essentially kind of like we're doing mountain climbing. How many each side? 15 seconds. Make sure our shoulders are stacked on the top of our wrists. Yeah. Good. Here we go, five, four, three, two, one. That will make me fast as hell, boy. So from here, hands on hips. Make sure that we're about shoulder width apart. Round the knees, Zach. Round the knees? Yeah. Forward, backward, side. 
So I actually forward and back. Okay. Forward and backwards for 10 on one bike. 10 in a row. 10 in a row. And from there, it was brought to our side. So kind of just like sidewalks. Go here. For 10. And then switch to the other foot for 10. All right. I feel the instability in my ankles because I have flat feet. It's like I go inward. Yeah, I know. That plays a part in it too. As soon as you smash it, that big toe in the ground, your arm actually adds force pressure. That way you can kind of use your ankle to kind of keep yourself stable. You'll feel the engagement here too. Yeah. We're trying to smash that toe, smash that toe to the ground, push it out into that band. So that way you feel, you instantly feel like that glue kind of activate. Right. There you go. Smash that toe on the ground. There you go. Okay, now side to side. Yeah. So also too with these guys, make sure that we're not just standing up tall, kind of breezing through it. Same. Hip hands a little bit over here. Get shoulder width apart. Kind of like the same thing we've been doing as far as like this far squat pattern. From here, stepping out, coming back in. So we'll go 10. Try not to shift too much. Really try to focus on just moving that singular foot out and trying to use that hip as best we can. Pushing out against that, pushing out against that band. Yeah. Is that not a Dunkin' Ice coffee? Right, I didn't get my That friend. looks so good. Perfect. Are we switching up, coaches? Okay, get set like you're gonna do the- Are doing the same one? Yeah, oh, six, exactly. Right? Yeah, Work go forward and back. Just out to the side. Okay. So you wanna take this hip and you wanna put it inside of your knee. So you kinda wanna turn into that left hip. So you turn, turn the chest a little bit more towards my hand there. So now you're gonna hold this position. Okay. Now, with holding everything on your left side, now you're gonna do your steps on the right. So you're holding that hip hinge or that hip load, whatever you wanna call it. You could even like look towards the pitcher that way and then just do those steps there. Every time you take a step, you should almost feel like this hip is like scooting towards the wall. Every like time you it's take a step, in the quill. There. Take a step out. Push there, that, that. Now the knee and the hip ankle is stacked in a better position. Whereas if you were to just stay straight, you're just kind of sitting here going out. You're not getting any like engagement in there. No engagement. That one I'm just so tired in here, that's but like, like in a good way. That's like that leak forward. If you ever like catch yourself like leaking out. Yeah. That's, that's that leak. Whereas if you stay on the hip, now you have more control. There. Money. Way Money. Way <laughs> Tired though. You do these even though it's just five reps. It's so tough. How many each side? Five. Oops. My hammies are feeling this. <laughs> okay, other side. Yep. Oops. I got really tired on that last rep, man. All right, what we got next? My hamstrings are gonna snap today, I feel it. I need to wake them up. I also wanna see what my max box jump is today. Last time I got 48. I know. Up and around? All right. Remember, when everything's stacked, hip, knee, ankle, all the together. I'm trying to move it as much, trying to really work on open up that hand. Yeah. How many you said? Eight. 
These feel so good. I feel like it's so much harder for females and women to just open their hips up and engage them more because the way that they're naturally set compared to men. I was gonna say, men are a lot more narrow. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You guys are amazing. You guys are absolutely We are actually unicorns. All right. Only thing stopping me is this band. You could go further. How many five each side? I'll just do one more for good luck. Winners always go one more. <laughs> That's it, boss. We're doing everything we just did for three sets. All right. <laughs> I'm here to get better, man in here to make sure that you're pushing your knee into this block and not letting it come out. Engaging in the hip flexor. Staying in line. Oh yeah, that feels good. What is that box? Let me get my knee a little higher. <laughs> These are hard, Harry. Oh, wait, we're, we're here yesterday? Yeah, I worked, I lifted heavy yesterday, so I was like, I'm like, today I just need to like mobility, talk to Mikey about good stuff for rotational athletes, and then cold tub and sauna. Oh, uh, this is phase two. I've been doing it since January. It's pretty intense, I will say. They're only three days a week, but they're heavy lifts. I'm hyper-extensive. I can't help it sometimes. I'll show you what my arms do after this. It's crazy. Look at my arms do. Isn't that crazy? I'm just super hyper-extensive, just like normally. It's just my life, man. I know. It's like a blessing and a curse. It's like I can get away with certain things, but then it's a lot of pressure on your joints and elbow and everything. Mikey, did you see my arms? Very loud. Oh, I do need stability. Oh, we're doing airplanes first. Rest in peace to my joints. These are my favorite ones, I would say. Head down. Good. Uh, next one, when you go out, you gotta bring like, right. Do it again. That's tough. That's hip separation. Okay. See if I can do it myself. Here we go. Forty-five degrees. So am I gonna freeze? You're gonna optimize. This is what's gonna happen? So I'm going what? Two minutes in here. Yo, two minutes in the cold plunge, but. Before you go in the cold, you're gonna do 10 minutes in the sauna. Uh, it's a traditional sauna, wood burning sauna. Gets up to like 220 degrees. And what that's gonna do is it's gonna slowly raise your heart rate by doing nothing. You're simply just sitting there. Obviously everyone knows all the benefits of using a sauna, releasing all those toxins, blood flow circulation, but also it's a good place to elevate your heart rate without doing much. So you elevate the heart rate, and then you come into the cold where the goal is to drop the heart rate as quick as possible. All right, so that's training your on off switch, your central nervous system. It's important for an athlete, especially to be able to be on, but then also points where you're chill, you're calm, you're cool. And so the more that you contrast, you do the hot, cold, multiple rounds, it's over time gonna train the body to be comfortable in high stress situations, but also be able to quickly down-regulate and chill, relax, get back to homeostasis. Okay, everybody, I just finished my mobility and my movement preps that I was doing for today. And now I'm gonna finish with some recovery. So I'm gonna hit this big barrel stone wood fire sauna. Pretty awesome. And then I'm going 10 minutes in there and two minutes in there, like Mikey said. So let's pray for me. I'm gonna try to get in the cold tub up to my neck because I want my full body to be recovered. And yeah, gotta be mentally tough for this. So let's do it. <laughs>
that last round in the sauna for sure <laughs> you need to shower it off That last one in the sauna was so hot. I'm kind of ready for this cold tub now. All right, let's get it. Two minutes. Rest in peace. Okay. <laughs> I didn't even see the timer, so. This one just circulates from time to time. Definitely. Water not taken. But I can tell. Exactly. I found one company. What's up? Uh, one more minute. What does my timer say? I see you have a ballpark estimate. 15 more seconds. You're kidding! I killed that. Actually, two minutes and five seconds. You know, just going the extra mile. All right, guys, that will wrap up today's workout. As always, I will leave the full workout in the description box below. If you have any questions, please ask me by leaving them in the comments. I would love to hear from you. And don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel. I really appreciate your support. I love you guys, and I will see you next time.